Clowning is a kind of calling, but it's fate or God-given that makes you one they laugh or cry at. Once you've been chosen, you can't reject it. All you can do is work hard to become a good clown. Joyful and sad, mischievous yet wise, people have always admired clowns, jesters and mimes. They do a tough job, their greatest reward is moving their audience to laughter or tears. Slava Polunian's tour schedule for next year has been finalised. He always pulls in a full house and his audience comes from the four corners of the globe. His pantomime performances never leave anyone feeling indifferent. Polunian holds many of the world's most prestigious theatre trophies, Edinburgh's Golden Angel, the Laurence Olivier Award and the Spanish Golden Nose among them. Five years ago he celebrated winning Russia's Triumph Award. Slava's a man who can turn a dull routine day into a magical experience. The essence of my work is to bring myself and my audience back to childhood dreams. I think it's vital for everyone to dream and understand their calling. Maybe when you are a child, you feel you can change everything. Slava was born in the remote Russian town of Navasyol in the Ariol region. At school, teachers would often throw him out of class for being inattentive and playing the fool. He would make faces imitating his teachers and deserved to be called a clown. But back then, he found it an offensive nickname. It was at school he created his first jokes and routines and he would act them out before his friends in the playground. He finished his schooling and moved to Leningrad to enrol at the Institute of Theatre. However, he failed in his attempt and instead went on to become an engineer. But that was too boring a life for Slava's creative mind and he enrolled at the Leningrad Institute of Culture. <laughs> At the age of 18, he founded his first theatre company, The Mummers, based on the Italian and French traditions of comedy dell'art. It was a theatre of mask, and each mask stood for a certain social type. There was the intellectual, the punk, and even the freak. The masks quarrelled, they laughed, loved and hated, danced and sang, and all on stage. Slava turned their life into a tragic comic foolery. I have had many phases in my career. One was the mummers phase. I set up a theatre because I wanted to get deeper into the psychology, philosophy and poetry of, of different social groups. Out of a hundred people I interviewed, I picked just one or two, a dozen or perhaps more, fifteen people on the list. I picked a team where everyone was a unique personality. I mean, I was after different people rather than regular characters. All of the Mummers' pieces were comic and eccentric stand-ups. The theatre was soon vastly popular in the Soviet Union and the company was often invited to join concerts on special occasions. Polunin's major breakthrough came on New Year's Eve in 1981 when the Assisi pantomime was first broadcast on television. It proved to be a huge success and it seemed as if the whole country was talking about the outstanding clown and his conversations with his girlfriend over a toy telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Asisyai and other characters look strange yet familiar to every onlooker. The theatre's popularity was enormous, and for two decades Slava Polunin and his mummers toured the country in triumph. Then, in 1988, as the cast celebrated their 20th anniversary, the announcement was made that mummers would be ending and a funeral would be held to mark their passing. Coffins were placed on the stage and all the burial rituals were observed. People gave requiems of joyful congratulations which led up to the internment. Thousands staged a march fantastique along the embankment of the Neva. It was like a carnival. I was delighted to have such a team. 
It was wonderful working with those people. It would be strange, though, if I'd stayed with the project. I'd have stopped being Slava Polunin. I bear this name because as soon as I reach something, I lose interest in it. If it's born, it has to follow its own path. But I'm always driven to see what's around the next corner, what's behind these curtains, what's in that box. And when the mummers became too successful, I said, now folks, I'm off to explore myself. The Mummers Theatre carved a path for Polunin to take up bolder projects. The first was the Mime Parade in 1982, assembling more than 800 artists from across the Soviet Union. In 1985, Polunin finally gained permission to invite foreign mimes and clowns to the USSR. In 1987, the Master of Mimes arranged the first festival of street theatre to be held in Moscow. One year later, he announced the All-Soviet Fools' Congress. In 1989, he showed off his skills as a clown to the whole world. Polunian's peace caravan toured the countries of Europe, and in 1993, Polunian set up the Fools Academy in Russia, a unique community of clowns and mimes. In 2001, he invited, as he puts it, every famous fool on the planet to take part in the Theater Olympics in Moscow. It took Polunin years to create his unique mime style. He's always disliked circus clownery. I was trying to find out what proper foolery is. I couldn't imagine myself being a circus clown. I don't like the word clownery because it's bad. There's nothing behind it. It's dead, not alive. I wouldn't like people to call me a clown. I wanted to find the clownery I like. There are few clown performances in the history of my art which I rate the best. A sort of lyrical clownery. Remember Charlie Chaplin looking at the blind flower girl? Offering her a flower and then, all of a sudden, it occurring to him that she was blind? Or Marcel Marceau with a dead butterfly in his palm. Palunian says his third teacher was Russian clown Leonid Yengibarov, who performed in the mid 60s. My first steps were very similar to his own. I have just followed his path. This lyrical clownery, tender, with a thinking hero, and a slightly impressionistic hint. During the Soviet era, all performances, circuses and gala shows were censored. At that time, clowns usually performed classical routines, unlike Yengi Barov, who preferred pantomime, an art form not subject to any censorship. That's why he was admired by the audience and hated by the Soviet circus officials. He devoted his short life in the circus to fighting for the freedom of improvisation. Leonid wanted to prove he was a free man. It was his life's goal. Once an idea struck him when he was on tour in Slovakia. Now someone had told him it was possible to cross the Austrian border, drop into a bar and have a pint of beer on the other side. And he realized that this was a good chance for him to prove that he was free. Leonid and his friend took a car and got there. Now he was so happy that they'd made it. They were drinking delicious Austrian beer when Leonid rose to his feet and said he needed to do something. He went up to a payphone, took the receiver, dropped a coin into it and dialed the chief of the Soviet Circus Association. Hi, it's me, Leonid Yengibarov. 
You said I would never get abroad. Good, I'm calling from Austria. You'll never be able to place obstacles in my way. If I really want something, I will get it by any means. The visit was over and he was back to the USSR. It was his last tour. The costume for this famous character was created overnight. Polunian confessed he spent several days searching for the colour that would make up his costume. He was sitting in front of a mirror pulling faces, when suddenly he noticed a yellow spot reflected in the glass. Behind him, in the wardrobe, hung some overalls his wife Yelena had brought him. In the twinkling of an eye, the hangar was empty and a strange chap in yellow rose before the glass. Since then, Slava has stuck to this jester's outfit, the colour of the sun. With his outfit ready, all that was required was to find a proper nose. Polunian believes a nose can either make or ruin a clown. He was searching through a variety of options, from a foam ball to a bird's beak, but in the end he picked an ordinary plastic cap. Slava says the nation-state is best symbolised by the cap of a foreign deodorant. Palunian has created his own unique image of a clown mime, a contemplative, gentle and, what's more important, poetic character. It is a strange person who stands in front of you in yellow overalls and red shaggy slippers. His performance brings out enlightened melancholy and Yengi Barov's sophisticated movements can be seen in his character. He is human. He moves people by being amusing like the great Charlie Chaplin. His mime is lit with Marcel Marceau's philosophy. The public adores him, and Slava believes his character helps people to return to their days of infancy. I admire this collective art for its electrifying fantasy atmosphere. One person gets an idea, another develops it, a third adds something suddenly and it all comes on fast and furious, almost in no time at all. You could see there are whole populations shooting up in a split second. It starts with a gesture, grows into a scene. More people arrive, the music's on. You need a team to make it. Today, the very Russian mime that is Polunian lives in Europe, tours the globe, and plans to set up his own school in his native country. He dreams of passing on the mime skills to young artists. Polunian has recently cut back his performance schedule and taken up teaching. In Moscow, he personally selects and interviews the candidates for the course he plans to teach. This is the first round, and I don't know how many there will be. Three or ten, who knows? The first round has an uncertain future but it's me who organizes it. You are enrolling at a school I'm trying to establish. Slava holds pantomime masterclasses for his trainees. He's looking for talented individuals and doing his best to restate the traditions of Russian clownery. Moscow authorities have decided to finance the creation of Polunian's own cultural center. Russia must restore its imperial ambitions in clownery. Russian clowns have always been popular across the globe. They have a good name. Perhaps it's not that simple to prove it. The examples are few, but people adore Russian clownery traditions. They respect them the way famous Stanislavski is respected. I used to work 11 months a year, now I work 5 months and can spend another 5 on my school and various new projects. <laughs> so
soon, young artists will start clan retraining under Per Union and meet other outstanding jesters. His dream is to have, as he puts it, the best fools from all over the world performing at his center. Everything the guy is doing is already provocative for me and for the future as well. I'm, yes, this is an interesting scene one can try to put in the harms show. And this one is an interesting scene, basically the key to such a topic. All this is waiting when you get back to this topic, then you will use the things which came in improvisation. Just like any actor, Slava Polunin has his muse, and in his case, it's his wife, Yelena. He first met her while creating the Mummers Theatre. Lena worked in his first shows and has been by his side ever since. She still performs in her husband's shows and has always been supportive of his new ideas, but prefers to stay in the background. She deals with all the domestic affairs of the family, which allows Slava time to focus on his creative work. Slava and Lena have three sons. The eldest, Dmitri, studies at Musical College in St. Petersburg, while younger brother Ivan performs on stage with his parents. Slava's most famous production is The Snow Show. He came up with the idea with his friend Viktor Kramer in 1993 as they were strolling the winter streets of St. Petersburg and talking of creating a real snowstorm indoors and on the theatrical stage. And so the snow show came into being. It's wonderful, I dream of you. Chips, chips. Do, 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 do. That show is the first of all my personal shows of Slava Polunin. All the actors who play with me realize that and accept it completely. And with such a great desire, they help me to make it real. Polunin's snow show examines the themes and emotions of love, loneliness, life and death. His character, Asisyai, makes a call on a rubber telephone. A trio of characters in yellow and red sings a moving and famous song titled The Blue Canaries. A character dressed in yellow overalls embarks on a long journey on his bed, accompanied by dolphins swimming by his side. The fantasy embodies Polunin's childhood dreams and puts them on the stage. He invites his audience to dream with him. In this show, Slava does not just act the fool and make people laugh. He opens his soul to the audience. He makes them think. In the final act, an ordinary coat suddenly softens the yellow man's loneliness. The coat becomes alive in some mysterious way and the sad clown Assisiae finds a good friend to whom he can say goodbye and to whom he can talk to before a long journey. I never address my viewers directly to make them understand what I want to say. I always live in my own inner world. I plunge into it and follow my fantasies. I find such a great pleasure in it that the audience starts feeling united with my character. It's carried away by these same fantasies and moves together with me in this labyrinth. When Polunian staged his first skits in 1968, there were almost no scenic decorations. A searchlight beam, a tape recording, a simple chair and microphone were the only props Slava needed at that time. His modern snow show captivates audiences with light and technical effects as well as sophisticated stage tricks. Powerful industrial wind blowers create the snowstorm. The snowflakes are cut from special paper which Slava imports from France. He uses a special synthetic material for his most famous trick, imitating a spider's web that winds its way around the entire hall. A team of professional technicians creates a kaleidoscope of colour using dozens of searchlights, lamps and light filters. All these techniques make Polunin's performance bright and spellbinding. I see that at the end of my show, the viewers usually forget that they've left their briefcases somewhere, that they need to return home on time, or that their wives have scolded them for a reason which they find hard to remember. Suddenly they come to feel the joy of living and working and some kind of excitement based on a hope that they've achieved their goal. They simply return to the idea of their lives. Niente più ti lega questi luoghi. 
Slava Palunin successfully continues his guest tours around the world. His friends and fellow clowns travel with him. His home is a van with a trailer. He carries a library of humour and a film collection of pantomime classics everywhere he goes. There's enough space for scenery, props, and there's even a special workshop in his trailer. Palunian has the aura of a travelling clown and magician of yesteryear. He calls himself a storyteller and reckons Munchausen and Gulliver are his spiritual brothers. The world of his fantasy stems from his childhood. It is full of love, sadness, laughter and tears. But what's more important is that it's sincere and familiar to everyone. Slava is prepared to stage his shows anywhere and bring joy to people everywhere. His most famous work, The Snow Show, has made it into the Guinness Book of Records, a shining example of the pantomime genre.